Hello everybody. I posted a video yesterday about mold and drying your plants, making sure that they are completely dry, drying your herbs. Now I have several videos that show that uh, the method that I use with the fan on low blowing over the herbs. Uh, I prefer this method myself because it is a slow dry method. Now since then, uh, since those videos, I now put the herbs in one of these mesh laundry bags and then I'll just turn them and, and flip them to let the leaves that still feel kind of damp, you know, they're not really dry. Uh, I just do that until the whole thing is dry. Then I grind them up. Now, after, well, now let's go into this one. Those seed bonnets that I had gotten, I have found because the lactuca heads are so much larger than what these will fit in. I should have put these over them as soon as those little bare buds came up. But what I've been doing is I've also been using these mesh bags to dry my herbs in. Now, on that same fan, what I do is I loop, I put my herbs in here and I loop this through like that over the handle. So what this is actually doing is hanging like this in front of the fan. Now that has really helped with my high moisture plants, uh, herbs, like actually the elderberry has been my most difficult and the mimosa blooms. And it's probably because their blooms, they, they may have a higher moisture content. Or if I have a bunch of small leaves, if I go to scatter those out on a bed, they're going to be blowing everywhere. Even in the large uh, mesh laundry bag, it's just a few little leaves. So I use this instead. Now, the other way I do it is put them in bags. Now what you can do is as it dries, you smoosh it down to get the air out. What, what do I have in here? This is Usnea. This is Usnea in here. So I check it periodically and I just keep compressing it and as you can see my whole box let me let me show you my whole box of, of dried plants right there and they're all labeled and I am getting ready to put uh, my my dried plants in envelopes uh, and Ziploc bags to take to the market on Saturday but after it reaches a sufficient level of dryness, now this goes into your long-term storage, you can leave the plants whole, the leaves whole. You don't have to grind them up. But as I've said before, I have a tiny little house and storage room. I mean, I've, I've, got, I've got boxes like this with bags in it on, on the back side of my kitchen, in two chairs in the living room, and in the spare bedroom. So this is as condensed as I'm getting with what I'm, I'm gathering regularly. And I haven't gathered anything this week. I have just not felt like it. So I've just been in a mood. And so uh, I'm going to try to, the cereola is getting to the point where if I don't gather it pretty quick, there won't be any more cereola. Cereola peaks at the hottest part of the summer and then it just dries up and you don't find it anymore. So, um, once I get it ground into, into small, smaller pieces, you know, to look like, 
to look like this. Uh, I put it in a brown paper bag. I label it. On some things I put the date. Uh, this one was full of the full moon lactuca, but I've already bagged that up and so I'm using this bag. This is not full moon lactuca. Uh, it is uh, just regular can of dips. It's just harvested uh, any time of the month. I've got my mullein here. So what I do is I put in the mullins only in this container because I'm getting ready to use that to put in my little envelopes and my little Ziploc bags to take to the farm market. But what I do is I keep it in these brown paper bags until I am absolutely positive there is no more moisture in it. Now that's when you're going to go to your mason jars of various sizes depending on you know the quantity you have and then use your little uh, coffee filter on the top to still allow for air circulation. Now that's the containers and the process. Now I want to speak on where you dry your herbs. Some people in, in, and this is just handed down, people have not changed this in thinking critically. At one time we hung our herbs upside down before we had air conditioning. This was the, 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 the first ways that people dried their herbs was by hanging them upside down in their rafters that were exposed because it was dry, there was airflow, and that was the best way to dry it. Normally in a kitchen where it's warmer because that will speed it up. But now that we keep our windows closed and we have central units, which I'm highly opposed to. I'll lecture about that some other time. But we have air conditioning. We keep our windows shut. We don't have fresh air in our houses anymore. And a humidity tends to build up, which is why you see a drip outside of the air conditioning. It's removing moisture from the air. So we don't need to just hang them upside down anymore. You have to take a little bit extra step. Now we don't want our herbs up high because heat rises and we don't want them too low because moisture drops because it's heavy. So what I do is I keep all of my dried stuff within eyesight in this mid-range of my head, my shoulders, my neck because it's warm enough but not too damp for it to dry. Now I do keep my windows open and the only time I run, that's why y'all always hear a fan in the background is because I keep my windows open. I can't stand a stagnant, stale smelling house and uh, it's not good for us. So at night I put my windows up and I have a fan going and most of the time during the day I have a fan going. So that brings in fresh air. That brings in, uh, it, it, you're not holding the stale uh, particles in your house. So I always have a fan going which circulates air, which then dissipates moisture, and actually even if the temperature is not dropped, the air movement itself creates a dryness, especially in something that has moisture contained. Now I'm sure there's all kinds of fancy scientific terms for that, but I'm not a climatologist and I, I'm, I, I don't, I, I have no clue. So that basically explains this process by drying. Now since I went to 
paper bags and since I stopped putting the lids on the mason jars and I just put the coffee filter with the ring, I haven't had any more mold. Now, I'll take that back. The uh, Two weeks ago when I got a bunch of, of uh, elderberry blooms and this is where you learn uh, you have to, sometimes you have to learn the hard way. I had elderberry blossoms in a brown paper bag and I thought that was sufficient. So I just left it sitting there like I do everything else and thought it would dry. Well, because the moisture content in the elderberry flowers was so high, the bottom of it molded. The, the blooms on the top were dry, but because that moisture was so heavy, they molded. So, threw them all out. I went and got some more. And they now, along with the mimosa blooms, dry in these mesh bags. So, that's some discussion on drying and how to keep uh, your herbs from getting mold. Now another thing is is some people think that uh, let's say a concrete outbuilding or a basement that seems like a good idea because when you go down it's cool. Whenever you're in a masonry building it's always cool. Well that's because uh, masonry it has thermal mass. But not only does it have thermal mass where it absorbs in and then outtakes what it absorbs in, but it does that with moisture too. Uh, that's where you can, uh, that's why you use clay pots. It's because when you use terracotta pots to plant in, you can water and then it will hold the water in for a bit but then it dissipates outwards to evaporate. So when you go into one of these masonry buildings, then it's doing the same thing. Now, if you live in a fairly dry area, it wouldn't be a problem. Jesus, I want to go to Arizona, and I will do a video on that pretty soon. But, but you go into a masonry building and it feels cool. That coolness is the dampness that it has taken in from the air. When the temperature starts falling, it releases that moisture and that heat that it took in through the day. So when you go to think about the location where you want to dry, that's another consideration. Um, outbuildings like sheds, wood sheds, as long as there's some kind of window and ventilation in it, that should be good. Um, one thing I want to caution you about with that is critters, is that bugs, flies, gnats. I have ants in my outbuilding right now. I've, I have I had to use a chemical, uh, one of those little bombs, to explode in there. They were everywhere. Now if I had had my herbs in there, they would have crawled all in my herbs. Now whether they ate them or not is another thing, but bugs will eat certain ones of these plants. So then you take a chance on um, on getting bugs in your herbs. So that's why you need to also make sure that you've got your herbs enclosed and covered so that critters can't get hold of them. Uh, if you had rafters, birds will fly in and knock stuff around. So those are some things I wanted to bring to you to um, aid you in the drying process and I, I, I can't recall my subscriber that that commented about this but thank you so much for bringing up the details because I had not thought to put all of the details together in one video so this is a pretty thorough and comprehensive video about the process of properly drying and storing your herbs. So 
Now I'm going to go start putting my herbs in little bags. I'm going to have little T90 bags that will be samples. In case somebody doesn't want to buy a couple of ounces of an herb, they'll get enough that they can make a cup of tea and see how they like it. See about the taste and do they get any benefit from it. So I've got little T90 bags for that. So I'm going to start with those. And um, so most of my, my tinctures that I've made are not ready. My brother's tinctures are. So, um, so we will see how Saturday goes. And after that, I will have a better understanding of what is viable for me. I want to do so many things. I still want to write that book, and but I'm tired after I get home from work. I need to go out and forage, but it's hot and sticky and there's mosquitoes out. So I gotta wait until late, and then I'm tired and I wanna go to bed. So, so there you go is my predicament. And then um, two, you know, sometimes life is just hard. And on that note, I'm going to close, but I'm going to say this. When life gets hard, we pray and we keep moving forward. And that is the word of encouragement that I have for today is to keep moving forward. And God bless you all. And until my next video, goodbye.